In this tutorial, I'll give you an overview of the best scattering plugin for Rhino called Rhino Nature. If you ever struggled with creating big scenes in Rhino and populating them with trees and grass, this problem is solved once and for all. Let's take a look. Alright, so let's take a look at Rhino Nature. This project was developed by Pshamisław Doliva, who is a Polish architect and CG artist and the owner of a design studio called Doliva Workshop. This project has been in the making for some time already and it was officially published a couple of months ago in August. Rhino Nature is an advanced non-destructive scattering tool for Rhino and it allows you to populate your scenes with an almost unlimited amount of objects in a very flexible way so you can change the settings and modify the scattering at any time. This means that you don't have to bake anything in the scene and that you have a complete freedom to experiment with different design iterations of your project. One of the features that Rhino Nature has is a lightweight viewport. This means that all of the scattered geometry is not represented in the viewport as a high poly object, but rather optimized as either a simple box or a point cloud. This way, your viewport will never be heavy and you'll be able to have a very solid frame rate when playing with your scene. Another awesome feature is live update. This means that once you modify your object, change its size or shape, all of the objects that were scattered will follow so you don't need to do the scattering from scratch. This is quite useful when you're still in the design phase of the project. Next one is Smart Ecosystem Management, which means that you have the ability to create many scattering groups with separate settings. And on top of that, you can control what you want to be visible in the viewport or what you want to be visible when the rendering starts. We also have a unique distribution feature, which means that you can control your scatter objects on any surface, any shape, with the ability to spread the scatter randomly or have full control of it. On top of all of this, Rhino Nature has its own model library, which means that you can just pick and choose the preset that you want, whether it's just a regular grass or a forest or some additional ground details, and all of these presets come with already adjusted settings, so you can just click render as soon as you import them in your model. When it comes to rendering, Rhino Nature is integrated with industry standard rendering engines like V-Ray, Octane and Unreal. This plugin is not free, but you have the ability to try it out for 15 days and see if you like it. Here we can see some of the scenes created with Rhino Nature, so you can get an idea of how powerful this tool is. Now let's go to Rhino and see it in action. All right, so here we are in Rhino. We have this uh, project open up and uh, set up the scene. On the right side here, you will see Rhino Nature. Uh, this is where uh, everything regarding this plugin is going to uh, be located. You will see it has a lot of uh, different uh, settings. The first thing that you want to pay attention to is ecosystems uh, and maybe entities and domains. For the for starters, this is the most important um, parts. So first, if you want to choose the ecosystem, you simply need to click here on this, uh, on this button. It will show up uh, the library that uh, is already available inside. So all you need to do here is to choose uh, the library that you want to, to check out. For example, let's do this uh, this forest, uh, you can choose the render. In this case, we're going to choose V-Ray and you can click open. Now you will see that this forest will appear here and we have the entities, which means the trees that are inside of this um, uh, preset and you can see the contribution in percentage of how much percentage of that particular tree is located inside of the um, ecosystem. Then we need to choose the domain. This is the, the last part. So click on plus and we choose the actual uh, you know, surface where that, that you want to modify. So you click here, enter, and this will pop up all of the, the forest and all of the trees. You can see how, how big it is. Now, let's just quickly test this to see if we are on the right track. So I would open up my V-Ray and we would uh, click on uh, render to see the forest. So you can see when I'm mov moving this, forest is already there and just with uh, you know single click we already have uh, the whole forest populated. One thing that is really important here uh, to mention is that once you modify this surface so let's this is in this case this is a sub D so let's say that I modify this sub D somehow so I'm going to select for example this curve and I'm gonna bring it up very high like this. And then you will see that all of the geometry is going to be connected right it's gonna update. But, you know, in this case, 
uh, once uh, once we look at this, you know, you'll see that the trees would usually grow like normal to the surface. So uh, in order to fix this, we have the ability here to change uh, the di distribution. So if you click on distribution, you have the orientation uh, slider here. Now it's set to normal. If you want it to be like, for example, if you want these trees to grow uh, up, you would put this to um, up here. So once I modify this, you will see how these trees are gonna grow up. Maybe a better option would be to turn on the appearance to change it to point cloud, sorry, to um, bonding box so you can actually see uh, the orientation of all these trees. Uh, of course, we would need to, to do this for each single, uh, each single uh, tree type so that we see all of them as uh, bonding boxes like now. Now you can see all of them are bonding, bonding boxes and you can see, for example, if you turn this all the way up like this, everything is going to be straight. And, you know, sometimes this is exactly what uh, what we need. So now once we do the render, uh, let's check out the result. Uh, let's click on the V-Ray and here you will see that all the trees are straight up, just like we wanted. Okay, so here is the render and you can see how uh, like all the trees are uh, exactly straight. So you can also see a little bit of details here on the trees. You can see that the models are, are quite, quite uh, impressive here. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to show you how to uh, modify a little bit of distribution of these trees. For example, here we have uh, a lot of them. And what if we want to have some kind of order in, in which we want to distribute the trees? Uh, here below in the distribution um, uh, side, you have the type right now the type is set to random so we can actually change this to grid vertex face or so on uh, and here is the amount that uh, once you change this it will change the density so right now it's 3.5 per unit but if you change this number higher for example let's say number 10 you will see that we're going to have much um, lower amount of trees so this is where you control uh, the amount of trees so I encourage you here to kind of check these, these distribution options and play with them and you will see that you will have different kind of results if you choose even or if you choose random uh, and you know depending on what, what kind of type of effect you want to get. I'm going to leave this random and also want to show you here a density mapping. This means that you can simply put any kind of map and this map will be resulting in the distribution of your, of your object. So in this case uh, let's choose, uh, for example, you know, as you see this this map, wherever you see white, that's where the uh, trees will be uh, distributed. So based on this, you can have clusters of elements and you can even create your own map. And based on that, you will have different type of um, distribution on your surface. OK, so now let's go back to the default settings. And now I wanted to share with you what would happen if we have some different types of ecosystems and different kind of surfaces. For example, let's delete this ecosystem here and let's uncover uh, something that I have prepared here. So let me just, uh, yeah, it's this one, broken parts. And let's say that we have two surfaces here. We have one surface where we want to be, for example, the concrete or the path uh, towards the object. And then we have this kind of surface where we want to put uh, our distribution, our objects. Uh, let's go again here. Let's choose uh, again, same ecosystem. Let's click open and let's uh, choose the renderer. Click there. And let's put the domain surface. OK. You see the population already done here. And let's maybe slightly increase here the, uh, the spacing. So now you see here that I have one ecosystem. What if you want to add another one for this path? So here, simply click on, uh, let's say, Basel here. Again, click on V-Ray, click Open, and click on Domain. You want this domain, click Enter, and we have this uh, distribution ready. And here it is. You kind of get an idea of how this would, would look like here. And let's simply you know, do one simple render here to see how uh, how would this look like. All right, so here's the image and you can see how we populated two different ecosystems uh, on two different uh, surfaces. So that's something that you can also experiment with. All right, so what would happen if you actually want to manually position these trees or you manu manually want to clear some of these surfaces from the from the scatter? 
So how, how uh, would we do this? So let's go back to the, to the previous example. Okay, so in this example, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, we don't want these trees to actually uh, be located inside uh, of our products. We just want it to be around. So how can we clear this out? Uh, on, this, uh, on this right side here, you have the tab that's called scopes. So here you just need to uh, actually, you know, choose the new new scope and you need to click here on the paint. And this way you will be able to uh, increase, for example, the size of this brush. Right now it's number one. If you increase, let's say 15. And you will see here in my viewport that I'm going to get some kind of like a circle that I can control. And you will see that once I do something like this, I'm creating the new scope of this uh, location for these trees. So right now I'm going to uh, circle a couple of times to make sure that no trees are going to come inside of this uh, of this building. And then uh, once I'm ready, I can simply say enter and you will see that I'm not going to have trees anymore inside. And the same thing would apply if you have, uh, you know, if you want to paint things on top of the surface uh, uh, and not just delete them, that's also the same option here in Scopes. So, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and let me know what you think about Rhino Nature and if you'd like me to make some more in-depth tutorials on this plugin. If you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning Rhino and Grasshopper architectural presentation, animation, rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course, first link in the description.